Welcome to Wandsworth Common. I'm Richard Fox. I'm co-chair of the Friends of Wandsworth Common. This is my wife, Julia, who's the other co-chair. And we're very pleased to be joined this afternoon by Annabel Osborne, the Parks Biodiversity Officer for Enable Leisure and Culture, who covers the whole of um, Wandsworth Green Spaces. We are situated here in front of this black poplar, which blew over in one of the storms at the end of last year. And the reason we're here is because it's a very good example of one of the downsides of climate change. So this tree and its neighbor over there were standing in a, a lake basically for several months at the end of last year due to the amount of rain we had. And that had the effect of weakening its roots and um, increasing the rot that, that had started to take place in its roots. And so the first storm that came along, unfortunately, the tree fell over. And this is what we now see today. Another fine example of where climate change has caused problems with excess water is actually an area over to my right here, which is one of the big lakes that we have on Wandsworth Common. And the problem is the water level changes the whole time through the seasons. So in the winter, we get flooding and in the summer, the water levels are too low and money has to be spent pumping water in artificially. We're going to hand over to Annabelle now to talk about how Enable are trying to help us and sort out some of these problems and build us a more resilient future. We aim to make our habitats more resilient to climate change. So the principles that we follow to do that are to make them firstly bigger, make all the habitats as large as we can with the space that we're given, improve their quality. So that doesn't just mean planting individual trees. It means thinking about the understory layer, a shrub layer, and then the tree layer. And something that we're doing in conjunction with the Friends of Wandsworth Common is to create some mini forests. So not only are we planting trees as part of that, but we're also looking to plant an understory layer where we've got small herbs, we've got grasses growing up. We've also then got shrubs and taller plants, and then we have the tree layer. And the final principle is trying to make those habitats more joined up. So we are doing that in various ways across the common. Um, it's guided in main by the management and maintenance plan um, and improving and maintaining a diverse mosaic of different habitats really is the key to making the common and all of our open spaces more resilient to climate change. This year we've trialled some new long grass areas where the grass only gets cut once a year um, and the purpose of that is to follow that principle of connecting habitats. So we've trialled two of those. Um, something Enable did a few years ago to try and combat the issues at the lake with flooding and with the drought is creating an amphibian pond. So we dug out a large area to the north of the pond, which in winter absorbs some of the overfill water. Um, and then throughout the season, as it gets warmer, it then slowly dries out. Um, and that's known as an ephemeral pond. And it's fantastic habitat for amphibians. We've come to the edge of the common and you may be able to hear the road in the background. But Annabelle, tell us what Enable are doing to help screen us from the pollution that comes from the roads. So up in the north of the common, we've got a small area with a playground. And around that edge of that playground, we've got, it's totally encompassed by roads. So we're going to be planting some native hedging. And the purpose of that it's not only going to screen that area from pollution particles from the vehicles, but again, it will act as another form of habitat connectivity. I probably don't need to explain to anyone in the audience listening today the absolute vital importance of green spaces, but let's just recap why we need them. So we need them for our own physical and mental health but we need them for the health of every species that lives here and for the health of our entire planet. So all green spaces, uh, and in particular the effect of trees, do a massive amount to mitigate the problems that we're facing currently. Green spaces absorb water, so they are flood mitigation. Green spaces are climate coolers and warmers. Green spaces are cooler than urban areas in the summer, and they're warmer in the winter. Trees actually soften wind velocity and wind has a lower effect in trees than it does outside. 
and that is the complete reversal of high buildings which actually increase wind velocity because the wind has to travel up and over the building and it accelerates. And the other absolutely vital function of our green spaces and our trees in particular is the sequestration of carbon dioxide. So the storing of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which is life-saving for us. And every mature tree gives out enough oxygen to keep two adult humans alive. Can't say better than that. We really, really need our green spaces.